everybody. So first of all, I just wanted to have a look at where we've been uh, in the lithium sector, just having a look at the, the peer group and, and obviously how heavily, heavily influenced the market is uh, by lithium uh, spot prices. So over this last six months, uh, the best performers there have been Liontown uh, and Pilbara. Uh, although I do know that Pilbara is uh, moving lower more recently, more recently in the share, uh, sorry, the short positions have grown in the stock. Um, there is an interesting cluster of, of bigger names around the middle of the chart there on the left-hand side. You've got uh, Minres and a few of the American companies, SQM, Albemarle, uh, Tianchi, uh, and unfortunately, um, Core and Sayana at the bottom being the laggards. As you can see in the, in the pattern of the share price movement on the chart, uh, we did see a peak in the market as we approached financial year end. Uh, there, wa there was some uh, shorter term positivity, at least in the trend in the commodity price, but that is um, uh, the, the, the sellers have, have lost a bit of ground to, to buyers and there is that um, uh, resumption of that downward trend in the market. Um, that is to some extent already being factored in, I think, to, into people's numbers, uh, although it is interesting to see the really widespread still between bulls and bears in terms of uh, assumptions uh, for the market. Um, you can see there, just as an example, uh, that's uh, the visible alpha consensus numbers for realised spodumene pricing for Pilbara. Uh, so that's Morgan's versus consensus. You can see we're sitting just below consensus uh, with a caveat there that there were a few downgrades uh, in recent notes by some of the bulge brackets, uh, and that does take a little bit of time sometimes to flow through Visible Alpha's numbers. So they, uh, a lot consensus is likely to be a little bit lower than what's shown there. But uh, it is interesting just seeing that that really wide divergent spread. Uh, you've got a, a bunch of analysts who are clustered at the top of the market and a bunch who are clustered uh, at the bottom. Uh, whereas I think that the truth and the, the current market pricing is probably a little bit more uh, centered into the middle. Uh, what's interesting too, I should point out, it was, um, uh, I thought a bit of an eye opener looking at some of the Wood McKenzie numbers that Allcam were referring to in terms of long term pricing when they released a market update in late September. So, Wood McKenzie are talking about long term real prices for hydroxide, for example, uh, being between 25 and 35,000 a tonne. Uh, so, that's real, that would imply that it goes up with inflation, whereas the low end of consensus is about half that number uh, at about 17,500 uh, per tonne for their long term price assumptions. Uh, and looking pretty flat in nominal terms. So just bear in mind, while the, the spot commodity price is trending lower, that does give the bulls a bit of ammunition, sorry, the bears a bit of ammunition. Um, I don't know that that necessarily uh, follows that um, we should be baking in their uh, lower forecast over the longer term. Um, given that you've got, you know, the, the structural forces facing the industry are still for long-term uh, compounding growth in the sector over multiple decades. So if we look at, What's happening in the, the biggest market, um, part of where we're seeing the, the price weakness, I think, is because the growth rate for new energy vehicles uh, is slowing. So we're not seeing the, the growth rate at breakneck uh, paces that we saw in previous years. Uh, you know, we were seeing year-on-year -year rates of, of tripling or doubling uh, over 2021 20, uh, and 2022. So that slowed to a more um, hopefully sustainable range between, you know, say around, you know, the, the 25 to 30 percent range, which is roughly what the IEA is forecasting in the next decade, um, and there are some green shoots in terms of uh, sales in the Chinese market for uh, NEVs. We are seeing a bit of a lift uh, over recent weeks, although I should say, uh, unfortunately, the Lunar New Year uh, break, which you can see in that uh, NEV production rate chart, those dips. Uh, just after after New Year, we are coming up to that period again. And I think that is probably giving uh, the bears a bit more ammunition. So uh, do I, th I think we probably need to uh, expect that there is the potential for some further volatility in the next six months. I think contract prices will probably smooth some of that volatility that's in the spot market. So we may not see as much volatility in realised prices uh, for producers, uh, but that is a short-term risk. Um, so in terms of how to play it, uh, as I've said a few times, Pilbara is uh, my key pick of the pure plays. It's well funded and had over $3 billion in cash at the start of FY24. It's got long resource life uh, at the Pilgangura uh, mine, a relatively simple uh, Brownfields expansion plan, and it's obviously Australian based, so it's a little bit of a simpler story to, to wrap your head around. Um, there is also uh, the potential for capital management uh, in the March quarter, so that was potentially going to be later this quarter. 
uh, but the company is um, taking a little bit longer to do its mine uh, study where it may extend uh, the um, the planned, currently planned expansion from a million tonnes per annum to a little bit more, but we'll need to wait and see how that, uh, that mine planning process plays out. Uh, they're also considering further uh, down, downstream expansion, uh, so they need to understand what those options are uh, and then presumably what's not going to be committed to capital growth um, could uh, be returned in the form of buybacks and or a special dividend. Uh, look, I think AKE obviously has uh, AKE obviously has a lot more uh, value upside, uh, and it's got a bigger pro growth program than Pilbara. Uh, but this does come with additional risks, given all of the uh, cost increases we've seen recently and the potential for project delays. So I, I do like the stock; I think it's got potential, but it is a high risk option over Pilbara in my view. Uh, Lion Town, the share price reflects the Albemarle offer. Um, it is interesting what's happening with Hancock prospecting. Uh, in the terms of uh, that Gina Reinhardt has built a blocking stake in Liontown. Uh, my view is that this is not likely to necessarily result in a competing bid. She's not talking about raising uh, an offer price higher than what Albemarle's uh, offering. It seems like it's jockeying for position in a, in a post-takeover uh, world, but that is a potential spanner in the works for Albemarle if, uh, if they can't negotiate with her, um, presuming that they're satisfied with their due diligence, which, uh, which is due to be completed soon. And then finally, just on core lithium, I think the stock is still stuff, uh, suffering from unresolved risks uh, for potential uh, requirements to upgrade the process plant at Finnis. Uh, the company is still struggling uh, with very low yields. There is, I think, the potential that they may need to spend a bit more on building uh, flotation circuits and, and middling circuits to, to lift that yield. Uh, we just don't know yet, but I think the fact that they had to raise a fair amount of capital uh, recently points to the fact that the company is probably trying to build a bit of a, a war chest to uh, soften the blow if there are uh, uh, the, there is the need for additional capital uh, in the future.